This first test, we're gonna look how the knee tracks during a step down. Here's the left leg, it's looking pretty good. And looking at the right side, check out the femur, a lot of valgus, a lot of internal rotation. And I'm just using my hands here to highlight those dysfunctions. On the tibia you can see how it's externally rotating. Now we're doing a weight shift test and my hands are on the greater trochanters. On that right side as he shifts his weight to the right there's a strong internal rotation at that femur that I can feel on the front of the greater trochanter. This first treatment is going to be hip on axis and first I'm just springing the upper femur from a posterior to anterior direction. And as I block the back of the femur at the, from the top, I'm noticing during external rotation that his femur is shearing posteriorly quite a bit. So I'm gonna block that and then I'm gonna take his leg into external rotation until it gets to the hardest end feel and now we're just going to use some pnf techniques with sustained pressure on the restriction to improve the mobility of the femur As the contractile tissues around the femur start to relax by using PNF and sustained pressure, I take up the slack and try to gain more range of motion. Once we gain new range of motion, we have to use stabilizing holds at the new range of motion. And I'm increasing my pressure as the patient is able to stabilize better. After prolonged holds, I'm going to get into motor control. And have them slowly let me win. And when I notice that there is reduced activation of the muscles, I'll have them pause and hold it and pull back into a strong position. And we'll return through their full available range of motion. And then we'll switch directions and do reversals as well. As I check passive AB and AD duction of the leg, I'm also going to be checking for restrictions in the myofascial structures around the femur. And with this patient in a deduction of the femur, they have a lot more restrictions into internal rotation in the circumferential mobility of the muscles around the femur. So I'm going to block those tissues in an internal rotation while my patient does active movement, either through the ankle or quad or pushing into external rotation until that improves. Now I'm just checking at the structures of the knee itself, looking at the patella tendon's ability to move medial and lateral and to distract away. And now I'm checking the infrapatella fat pad and it should have a similar quality of springy mobility medially and laterally. And I notice a hard end feel trying to move that fat pad from lateral to medial. So I'm gonna use functional manual therapy techniques to improve that restriction.
And now I'm just gonna do some skin sliding just to feel if there's any restrictions through the skin, superficial fascia, but also to assess the quality of the mobility of the tissues below. And right here, I'm checking the quad tendon for the mobility medially and laterally and the ability for it to bend and distract and noticing that from the lateral side, it's got some restrictions there. So I'm gonna start working through the various layers of the skin and superficial fascia, the vastus lateralis muscle, the bony contours of the lateral patella, the lateral knee retinacular structures, and the IT band while the patient does active movement. As restrictions change, I'm going to use various techniques from functional mobilization coursework through the Institute of Physical Art. And my assisting hand is going to go through some shortening while my treatment hand works on sustained pressure, unlocking and locking spirals. And I'm constantly double checking that I'm on the restriction by changing the angle and direction of my treatment hand making sure I'm on the right layer. As these restrictions start to ease, the resistance will soften and the end feel will become springy and more elastic as tone reduces around those contractile tissues. And here I'm just checking my work and sure enough, these tissues are moving quite a bit better in their ability to have play. So now I notice that this distal IT band is not moving backwards or posterior. So as I engage it with sustained pressure, I'm having my patient do some active movements down at the ankle and at the knee just to help localize this restriction and to aid in its ability to release. And as I follow that restriction up, seeing how high up the thigh it goes, changing my angle and direction to ensure that I'm localizing at the hardest end feel on that restriction. Now I'm checking the bony contours around the fibula and noticing that it is very restricted moving backwards or posterior. So as I engage that hard end feel, I'm asking my patient to actively move their ankle and also to actively move the knee. Now I'm going to be checking the ability for the femur and tibia to shear in the frontal plane, so side to side. And I'm blocking one bone and checking the mobility of the other. And the end feel to determine if it's hard or springy. So on that last test, the femur was having a hard time moving lateral on the tibia. So I'm using foam rolls and different fulcrums to block that structure, in this case the tibia, as I stabilize it with my bottom hand. And now I'm checking for the ability for that femur to shear laterally 
with internal rotation or external rotation. And sure enough, it's hardest in internal rotation as I create a force down to the table through my upper hand. And as I engage that hardest end feel, I'm asking my patient to do active ankle movements. Here I'm blocking their lower leg while they do a hamstring curl or a quad set here. And I'll start to notice that that end feel becomes springy. And now I've removed one of those foam rolls and we're checking on the ability for that medial side of the joint to maintain approximation through extension. This is also a congruency test for the knee and a treatment technique for the medial meniscus. So on this one, the test is a speed bump test and this patient is positive on this test. So as he's extending the knee, I'm uh, compressing and shearing both of those bones down to the table while he actively straightens the knee. And now we're doing some PNF techniques, prolonged holds to improve the neuromuscular function. And now we're gonna work some motor control training through some combination of isotonics, primarily focusing on the femur. Now we're going to look at the ability for this patient to hold an in-range position by doing some knee extension PNF. And right now I'm checking a little bit more of that vastus lateralis bias using a PNF pattern. And now we're going to be checking more of that VMO side. And this is significantly weaker on this patient. So we're going to use some PNF techniques and start to improve that strength, initiation, and endurance. And I'm going to use that other leg with the hamstring to help build up some strength on that right side. As that strength improves, I'll have the patient slowly let me move them throughout their available range of motion. So now I'm checking for stability below the knee and above the knee in this extended position and standing. And I'm noticing that this patient's having a harder time stabilizing with resistance above the knee. So we're going to do some prolonged holds here and work into some active movement and a forward lean. And I'm also going to resist above and below while my patient goes into some heel raises and repeated knee bends. I'm given a lot of cueing here on where to activate and how to feel this movement appropriately. I'm gonna be using some blood flow restriction for this patient as a way to really start to hypertrophy some of these muscles and change some of the connective tissue rapidly with light resistance. Now for the retest, you're gonna see that this Right leg is moving quite a bit better. Less effort, less resistance, more efficient movement, and less discomfort.